Anytime you open your TV, news, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, SNS, it's easily accessible to any news related to COVID-19. Outbreaks, different strains, vaccines being released and their effectiveness. Today, I would like to focus on the word strain. Strain. Variant. Mutations. What is the difference between those three words? From a nursing perspective, there are some limitations to explain the difference in depth, thus it required some deep research. And this is the result. A mutation is a process by which a strain can take on new variants. This phenomenon is expected in normal. A strain is a base just like a core cell. There's only one strain of coronavirus known as SARS-CoV-2. From this strain, there will be many various mutations and this seems to be called variants. Thus, in conclusion, the term strain is only appropriate referring to SARS-CoV-2 virus causing COVID disease. The rest may classify as variants since there aren't enough mutations done to classify them as different strains. Once the variant became significantly different, can be a different kind of disease, different transmission methods, different mechanism, different host, then it would be reasonable to classify this variant as a separate strain. Some may ask about virus isolate. To being honest, I'm not certain. For Quentin Stanley, researchers at Donald Danforth Plant Science Center defined a virus isolate as a sample that has been cultured for study. Van Jan Mortel, from the Cole Superior de Biotechnology de Strasbourg, defined as simply an instance of a particular virus. The article is attached below in case you are more interested. The leading question is that, why everyone is using multiple words such as strain, variant and confusing? The answer would be that, there's no universally accepted definition for those terms. Without concrete terms, there will be more confusion and more fears in our society. Be aware that the explication I provided might be inaccurate. Indeed, as a non-expert view, there are some difficulties in understanding detailed information. Putting that aside, this is the list of known variants. L variant, appeared in Wuhan in December 2019. S variant, appeared beginning of 2020. VNG variants, appeared since mid-January 2020. The G variants are the most widespread and it mutated into GR and GH at the end of February 2020. Europe area is exposed to G slash GR variant mainly. The GH variant is widespread in North America and GR variant in South America. In Asia, L variants were most common at the beginning. As time goes, G, GH, GR variants cases also increased. Depending on variants, they have their characteristics and unique aspects. Some variants can be more easily transmitted or more dangerous. This would be the case of B117. The new Cabot variant in the UK. The optimistic side is that there's no specific proof that the variants are different enough to classify a strain. Indeed, there are still multiple mutations as we speak. Thus, this requires more study to clarify. As I mentioned above, multiple variants don't mean it's a different virus or disease. COVID-19 variants still have the base on SARS-CoV-2 strain. It means that they share the same transmission method and same host. WHO stated COVID-19 is possibly transmitted via contact, droplet, airborne, thamite, fecal oral, blood burn, mother of a child and animal to a human. So far, we believe that the main transmission method is droplet and contact. Thus, be careful with infected droplets contacting surfaces of the eye, nose, or mouth. This emphasizes the importance of hand hygiene, mask and potentially face shield too. Then what about airborne? SARS and MERS were airborne transmitted, but what about COVID-19? The study showed that there's not enough presence of SARS-CoV-2 RNA in an air sample, and even though it was detected, it was extremely low numbers in large volumes of air, which can be considered as an inability to identify the viable virus. However, the possibility of airborne transmission in an indoor setting with poor ventilation is still there and requires some caution. For instance, SARS-CoV-2 airborne transmission can occur during medical procedures. The answer regarding this remains in doubt and seems to require more research.